Adam could be home by Friday afternoon or Saturday if this goes through. Adam could be home by Friday afternoon or Saturday. What? What? Oh my God. Okay. I'm not supposed to tell anybody this, but you're my tribe. Adam waived his rights to have to be at court. And the attorney was like, listen, like they don't want to have to send him there. They don't want to have to send him there and then send him back. He's like, first of all, I've made that trip. It's excruciating, you know, belly chain, handcuff, black box. You guys know the drill. Also, they don't want to send him back because he could be potentially bringing germs there. And he's like, I don't want to have to get him to the point where he's in the hole for two weeks, quarantine, this and that. And the guy was so on board. He's like, the call went amazing. Actually, that call took place on my birthday. Adam told me that on my birthday. I was like, well, I just finished my makeup. I'm going to dinner. This is the best news ever, right? Sean was going to reach out by Friday and see what the judge who has the final say says. They want to do, they want to do it on Friday. Adam could be home by Friday afternoon or Saturday if this goes through. Adam could be home by Friday afternoon or Saturday. What? 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 Like, I can't. I still will believe it when I see it. And I was like, you know, I'm trying not to get excited. He's like, I'm going to do my best to get time served. We'll see what happens. And I'm like, okay, but like, what does that mean? I'm like, what does that mean? Like, if you do this on Friday, does that mean like he could get time served on Friday? He's like, that means Adam could be home by Friday afternoon or Saturday. What? Or not, or not, or not. But like, okay, I gotta go. I, I don't know what's happening right now with my life. Friends, I'm sorry for this god awful angle. I'm sorry I'm in the car. I hope my phone does not fall. I just wanted to check in really quick because I don't even know how to say this. I'm on my way to potentially pick up Adam. Yesterday, the attorney called me again, and I mean, we've been communi in communication throughout the whole week. I, and I told him, I said, Should I go there? And he goes, Bro, I honestly can't advise you on that because I don't know what the outcome is going to be they'll release him right away Friday Saturday I'm not sure sorry I had to move my phone because it fell now you're in the vent so hopefully you can hear me but I spoke and I'm sorry for this angle it's awful but literally my phone is in the vent holder so Adam said of course I want you to come I'll see you Friday he's dead set on the fact that he's getting out today this afternoon so the hearings at one and I was still kind of on the fence and I called one of my girlfriends and a fellow prison wife, a life or wife, and she lives about two and a half hours from where Adam is. And she's like, come out here. Worst case scenario, he doesn't get out. Hang out with me. Just we'll have a girls weekend until he does get out or at least it's not a wasted trip and then you can go home. So, and I haven't seen her in over a year. So that's what I was figuring I was gonna do. Still convincing myself that he wasn't gonna get out today, maybe Monday. Maybe the judge would give him a few months. I don't know. So then the attorney called me yesterday and he told me that um, he had a good conversation with somebody with some intel. And he's like, I was going to advise you not to go originally, but I think we have a really, really good chance at Adam getting out tomorrow, which is today. So I woke up around, I packed everything in the house. I should show you guys the car when I stop. Literally, I don't know if there's room for Adam. I'm kidding. Of course, there's room for Adam in the passenger seat, but everything from the back seat to the trunk is jam packed with stuff. So I'm driving out there and I'm going to wait to hear. The attorney's going to call me as soon as this is done. He said that he's going to call me first. He's going to call the prison second, and then he's going to call our dear friend John, who is literally on a plane right now come from Vegas because Adam wants him there when he's released. So we're all doing this on faith. And oh so I got up this morning. I could barely sleep last night. Got up at around 4.30. Well, I'll rewind. I slept really, really well. I conked out till about 4.30, but all week I've been sleeping a few hours a night because I've, I'm so excited and nervous and every emotion you can imagine. So I got up around 4.30 
and I tried to talk myself into going back to sleep and I couldn't fall back to sleep. So I laid in bed. Maybe I was in and out of sleep, but I think I was awake most of that time. And I got out of bed somewhere between 6 and 6.20, I'm not sure. And I started packing the car and then I showered. Then I made breakfast and then the nerves started to set in and my stomach was killing me. I thought I was gonna be sick. And finally, around 8.20, I got in the car and I started driving. So that's it, yeah. I will be back to check in. I wanted to make videos throughout the week with my emotions and everything that was going on leading up to it, but to be perfectly honest with you guys, I was in denial. Like, I, I'll believe it when I see it, if that makes sense, and I know that doesn't probably make any sense. I don't know. And because of the fact that I didn't sleep, and I'm a total emotional wreck when I don't sleep, I, as soon as I got in the car to make the drive, started crying. Good tears, happy tears. I think it's just going to be a weight lifted. I think I've been driving for about two hours, and it's a six-hour drive, so I need some distractions because this is like the long, it's going to be the longest drive of my life. This has been the longest two hours of my life. I'm trying to find a book that's really distracting that I can listen to, but I'm going to go because I need to put the air conditioning on, and I didn't know if you guys could hear me. This could be it, the beginning of the end. This is my very last drive. This is my very last drive out to McKean. It's crazy. It's crazy. I still don't believe it. I'm getting chills as I say that. And I'm glad I'm not crying. Hi, my friends. It's Ro. Today is Saturday. It's, I don't know, 8.30 and 1 o'clock's from the other way. So I am in a hotel in Bradford, Pennsylvania. <sighs> what a week it's been. I'm not gonna post this unless, until Adam comes home. So this isn't bad news, it's just like a little hiccup. But it's all good news. I just got myself overly excited. He got me overexcited and we got ahead of ourselves. So on Monday, the attorney called me and he said that Adam's compassionate release because it had been granted. He waived his, Adam's hearing for his compassionate release was yesterday, so we assumed that if all went well and everything looked good, that he would be released immediately. So I packed the car and I drove six hours here to Bradford, where I am now, because I wanted to be there when he was released. And I knew it was a possibility that he wouldn't be released yesterday. But on the off chance that he was, I drove the six hours because how could I not be there? So I always knew in the back of my head that that would happen and I was going to drive out to a couple more hours to go hang out with one of my girlfriends if it didn't happen. But the problem is we were so psyched about it. We Part of this is what the system does and majority of this is what we do and what he does and I follow his lead and I ride on his coattails and that's why I stopped announcing these things before they happen because... I look crazy and I look psycho and this has been normal progression of the legal system and dealing with getting somebody out and dealing with everything related to prison. It's all slow and it's baby steps and sometimes it's one step forward and it's two steps back and that's not what this is. This was us getting ahead of ourselves, me getting pulled right into the excitement. I'm not blaming anybody. I did it myself and then having to backtrack. And having to explain that to you guys it makes him look like a bad guy. And he's not. It's just his excitement. It's the way he copes. Literally everybody on the compound was waiting for him to be released yesterday. And then that kind of made it more emotional for me because it's this is me and this is the way I am. It's got nothing to do with him. And a friend kind of talked me out of it. But I'm like, oh my God, now he's going to be so embarrassed. He thought he was coming home and everyone thought he was leaving yesterday. And then he has to go explain that to people. He probably doesn't care. I do. So we're both pretty disappointed, but the worst part about all of it is that he doesn't have four minutes left for two more days until Monday. So I couldn't speak to him yesterday. I can't speak to him tomorrow, today or tomorrow. And I think sometimes you just need to hear the sound of somebody's voice and talk for a couple minutes to regroup. And we can't do that. So this isn't bad news. It's actually really good news. 
it's really good news. The attorney said the meeting went as well as it possibly could, minus the fact that the judge wanted to go back and write an order versus giving a verbal order, which is just slowing things down. It could be, though, that he wants to go and sing Adam's praises. Could be that he wants to go back and resentence him to obviously less than 213 years, but more than the equivalent of the 24 years that he served. Just to clarify, he's been in 20, but with good time, he's served the equivalent of 24. I don't know what else to say. It's been so emotional. Like, I just, I feel very, very, very over it. And it's understandable. Like, I tell you guys all the time, there are such high highs and such low lows when you're in this life. And yesterday I was on such, such a high all day and I kept telling myself, don't get too invested. Don't get too invested throughout the week. I was just acting like it wasn't going to happen. But as the days progressed and we got closer to it potentially being a reality, I allowed myself to get more and more excited. And that's kind of where, I don't want to say I screwed up, because had it happened yesterday and I didn't come, that would have sucked. So, it's, it was it either would have been a win-win or a lose-lose. It's just a risk that I took. I gambled and now I have to go home because, I mean, this could happen. It could turn around and happen on Monday. But I can't take the risk of, oh shoot, it's Adam's mom new spot i'm eating breakfast that was just adam's mom we've been calling to check up on each other i was saying i can't take the risk of waiting around all weekend waiting around on monday for news not getting news driving home having to take tuesday off of work to drive home and then keep having to take days off of work to drive back and forth and then drive out to Vegas. and i don't have endless days off of work, although I have a lot, especially because of COVID, I have some saved up because I haven't had to use them and been able to go anywhere. And I've been working from home, but I'm just eating. I'm gonna stop at Tim Hortons for all of you in this area or Canada and get a coffee and then make the drive home. Eating and drinking water is helping because I was just feeling so drained. One of my friends last night was joking, like, just get a bottle of wine and chill, but I couldn't because, first of all, my mood, second of all, I had, I was nervously having to go to the bathroom, so I stopped drinking water because I had to pee every freaking half an hour, which is a pain in the ass when you're driving for six hours in a pandemic. Most places won't let you go to the bathroom. And I couldn't eat because I had a nervous stomach all day. I, I had no appetite, so that would have been a fierce hangover on top of feeling a little bummed and having to drive six hours. So I decided against that, but I think, I think that's adding to the mood. That's why I always say to stay balanced during the ups and downs and the highs and the lows of this life. You have to really try to force yourself to stay healthy and whatever healthy looks like for you, healthy might look like, might look different to you than it does to me. For me, that's drinking a significant amount of water every day, eating a lot of vegetables, not eating a lot of sugar, getting eight hours, at least eight hours of sleep at night. I require a lot of sleep. And that's kind of slack throughout the week, as well as exercise. I've been walking a lot because my car was in the shop last week because timing doesn't really love to be on my side, but it worked itself out because I had told the guy I had to go on a long road trip and I needed to move the car back on Friday and he'd had it back for me on Thursday afternoon, which was beautiful still at it we're getting closer it's very very good news there's no reason for me to feel down other than the fact that i'm i want to say slightly but i'm highly disappointed that i didn't get to see him and it would have worked out if it wasn't COVID because there's no visits right now they're shut down because of the virus but at least if i drove out here and i couldn't pick him up if it wasn't at least I could have gone to visit him for the weekend and it would have made the drive worth it, but it's okay. I make these videos so you can learn from my mistakes. And the lesson in today's video is try not to act rashly. We have so many people who act rashly and do things that could, I mean, this wasn't dangerous by any stretch of the imagination, but do things that could potentially be dangerous. And they put themselves in bad positions because want to do right by their man in their heads and 
doing right by your man is doing right by you first and keeping yourself safe and healthy and did I do as I say not as I did that's okay we're getting closer and this is gonna be a good video because I'm not releasing this one until he does come home because it just doesn't make sense to keep telling these stories without the happy ending all right see you next time hello my friends I'm sorry this thing I have to sit all the way back so you can see me because it's in my vent funny and it looks like it's gonna fall but update so last time I updated was Saturday today is Tuesday Adam got time served Adam's sentence is over I am on my way back there the irony of the situation is that <laughs> oh, I just did this drive and then the attorney he's trying to get answers but you know how the prison system is and I, I get it I get it they're like we can't tell you if he's gonna be released like we don't go off a hearsay and I get that so they have to wait for the paperwork to go through and he said well if the paperwork goes through today hypothetically you get it will he be released today? and they're like we can't tell you that so I said well will he be released like today or tomorrow and he said yeah they can't hold him so I showered as fast as I could packed the little amount of stuff that I had unpacked from the car and then I'm not gonna lie to you guys I was a complete and total cranky moody bitch to Adam all weekend trying to pick fights and he's so good he would not engage with me arguing with him but um and still was very supportive he didn't just disappear but it's just the emotions you know the high and the low the very extreme highs and lows surrounding not only this life but this case so about I don't know almost an hour into my drive the attorney called and he's like the order says that he has to be released by Thursday at noon so he's like turn around and I just started laughing hysterically and then as we were on the phone he's like wait a minute by Thursday at noon so could that mean any minute like I don't know what the hell that means but I'm still driving he I just saw a text from him that just like popped on my phone of course I didn't open it but it said he was still on the phone with the BOP trying to get answers so I'm just gonna keep driving I mean the worst case I go there and I stay in the hotel room for a day it's better than driving back and forth and him, you know, me going home and then him getting released and me then having to get in the car and drive six hours. So it has been a tumultuous, not tumultuous, but it has been a very extremely emotional few days, but I wouldn't expect anything different with this case, to be honest with you. So hopefully the next time I check in, I will be with Adam, but it could be tomorrow and I could just be taking a day at the pool <laughs> waiting for Adam to be release because they're going to milk every last second of him and I'm sure out of it and I'm sure I'll see him at like 11 59 on Thursday <laughs> good morning my friends the lighting and the angle isn't the best but I'm in a seedy hotel room in Bradford Pennsylvania hopefully my last time here ever so yesterday was the most stressful day of my entire life literally Adam's order came through then he called me I'm being released tomorrow morning today at 8 o'clock be there by 7 30 it's now 10 o'clock he's not released because they reneged at that something was wrong with the order then something was wrong with the release address then something was wrong with the parole address it was just one thing after another I was literally on the phone with I have to say the most amazing lawyer and team ever Sean just like a huge shout out so much I'm gonna make myself emotional and cry if I talk about how amazing he was I mean throughout all of this and especially yesterday literally just kept me up to speed calling me every few minutes giving me more information getting more information to try to get this done so that took from probably 10 o'clock in the morning until I think our last call was like after 8 o'clock close to 9 o'clock last night and so we had to get a new order from the judge they got that through so as of last night we're waiting for the warden and everybody to sign off of it at sign off on it at mckean so adam could be released at any point today or tomorrow before noon the judge's orders said he has to be released by noon on thursday which is tomorrow so i got up i i, I don't know how long I slept because I refused to look at my clock so this way if I did like what I did last week was 
I saw that I wasn't sleeping until one o'clock in the morning and then I woke up at 30, so I knew in my head that I only slept a few hours so I didn't want to do that to myself mind over matter it so I slept but I just kept waking up and then like not being able to fall back asleep because my thoughts were racing it, it's, it's it's excitement it's nerves you hear me <laughs> I got up this morning a couple minutes before seven then I food in my teeth then I slowly I haven't unpacked the car because I have so much crap in there because I'm going to be away for two weeks. We have to quarantine, all that stuff. So I slowly went and I got my stuff out of the car, what I needed, just like in a plastic bag because I'm not about to take a freaking, I don't even know how big this suitcase is. It's like bigger than me out of my car. So got that kind of stuff, slowly showered. I was toying if I wanted to put on makeup or not for his release because on one hand, I want to look pretty and I want to look my best, of course, and on the other hand, I'm going to be a soppy mess, but I did find waterproof mascara in my bag, thank God, so, and it was a waste of time. I did that, then I got myself slowly dressed, fixed my hair, repacked all of that stuff into the car, then I got myself uh, a coffee. I went down. I actually went the long way to get coffee at Tim Hortons. I went there, sat in line forever, spoke to one of Adam's closest friends. Shout out to Keith, who literally is like, I don't know why he's not a millionaire motivational speaker because he got me right in the perfect mindset. And then I came back here. I used the coffee to make myself some oatmeal with chia seeds in it for protein. Do you guys care about all these details? I don't know. I'm babbling because I'm nervous. Speaking of nervous, my stomach has been I have such a nervous stomach. I actually wound up having to take something for it because I'm just, my stomach is in knots. Um, so I wanted to check in and give you Keith, the motivational speaker. Was, he doesn't, I don't think he realized that I was vlogging, but he's like, I want you to soak up every moment of this. This is for you and Adam. He's like, you're getting coffee right now. Look around. What does the coffee cup look like? What does it feel like? What's going on out there that you can just pay such close attention to all of your senses so you can lock this into your memory? I thought that was so sweet. So here I am, oof, fighting back tears. It's gonna be emotional in a good way. I'm hoping the next time I check in will be soon. <laughs> after I get the call that that was like the worst ugliest nervous giggle after we get the call to go pick him up and in case this means anything to you guys the way that I have to pick him up during a pandemic is that they said that I have to go I have to park the car just like I was going to visit I have to make sure I have a mask I have to go downstairs and explain downstairs because the parking lots a flight up and then you walk down a flight of stairs and that's where the entrance is into the facility walk to the front desk, tell them that I'm there to pick up Adam. Those words that don't even feel real. And then they might make me go back up to the car and wait for him, which is fine. Somebody has to walk him down from R and D, which I don't know what that's actually, I want to say receiving and delivering, but do you deliver people? It's something I have no idea. It's where people come in and people are processed in and out. So I was like, all right, that's fine. And then I'm going to throw up we'll go from there so my emotions let's talk about my emotions yesterday of course was just the most stressful day of my life there was nothing but stress and it also felt like I wasn't coming here like on Friday when I drove out here it felt like I was just driving out to visit yesterday when I was driving out here it just felt like I was driving somewhere long it didn't feel like I was coming here it doesn't feel like I'm going to pick up Adam today although my nerves are a wreck so my brain somewhere in there knows it but it doesn't feel like that I think once I get that call, it'll be real. Like, I'm shaky. I'm very shaky, but I'm nervous AF. I'm, I'm, I'm every emotion. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm scared. I'm everything. Today changes my whole entire life for the better. It's scary. So I'll keep you posted. I love you guys, and hopefully, hopefully, this isn't dragged out any longer. Hopefully, I'm not checking in again tomorrow. I'm doing this all over again because my makeup came out good and my hair looks good. So it needs to be today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love you guys. I'll be back. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Oh my god! They just called me. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, I will be back. Okay. So this is it. This is it. All right. Well, I just wanted to take a couple minutes while we were stopped here at a gas station out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> taking the scenic route uh, on our way from leaving McKean to where we're gonna be quarantining. And 
I guess this is the first chance that we've had to, to stop and make a video. I just wanted to talk about some of the things that we've picked up so far. Can you see everything in the back? The back seat is packed. And it was funny because when we were talking about this and you were telling me how much stuff was in the car, I was like, ah, we got plenty of room. It can't possibly be that crowded. No, it's really that crowded right now. <laughs> Like, my seat will not go back at this point. Uh, but it's cool. A uh, couple of things. Burt's Bees Lip Balm. Just to get some lip balm, like, I know it doesn't seem like much. It's something so simple. But I was excited to be able to pick this up. A couple of the other things. We picked up some peaches. That's my stuff. Man. We have Altoids some breath mints some aha sparkling water which I have not tried yet uh, but you know it was something that I was looking forward to we're all about promoting you know health and well-being and you know it's evident in, in obviously what we picked up so far we just picked up a couple gallons of water to make sure that we're staying well hydrated all right can I put you on the spot yes so We'll see. I think we should talk about you walking out like today and all of those issues later. I've been making a video like almost every day, like last Friday. Well, was it last Thursday or Friday? I drove up. Thursday, Friday. Friday. And then Saturday, like bombed out in the hotel room. And then yeah. yesterday driving and all that stuff. But what I think everyone's going to want to know, because we hear as people on the outside, how overwhelming it is like to choose stuff at a store or that kind of stuff. So like going on kind of this theme of Walmart, how was the experience going in there for the first time and being around people and then I made him do self checkout. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that like? Did you feel overwhelmed or tell me about that? Believe it or not, uh, I wasn't overwhelmed by any of it. I was actually, uh, you know, I, I said this earlier, even though I had all the choices you know, I wound up going with some of the things that I knew, and it's not because I was overwhelmed by the choices. It was just, that's what I wanted. I mean, you know, sometimes more choices is not necessarily better. I agree. You know, I wasn't overwhelmed by any of those things, and, and I've given a lot of thought and time and preparation into, into making sure that I was ready this time around, because my experience the last time when I got out, obviously that was a long time ago, and I wasn't prepared for it. Things were moving so fast, and I was overwhelmed by those, all the all the choices, all the options, just being around people. Uh, I will say being in Bradford was a startling experience, like looking around, seeing people, how unhealthy everyone looks. Yeah, it's a very poor area, I think that adds to it. Yeah. I don't know if I should even add that in the video, but. Well, I mean, it's the reality. I, I know economically Bradford is a depressed town. Uh, and we saw it like you could see it in the people and we saw someone from the prison someone who did not want to acknowledge me and yeah well how was your relationship inside not good yeah not good this was someone who did everything in their power to uh try and deter me and others from doing what we were doing yeah just a, a very negative influence and it was a she she who's a teacher who you know is paid to inspire and was doing special education what always stood out in my mind was a friend of mine that I was encouraging to get his GED a guy who was in his 40s and she told him don't even try don't worry about it you'll never get it that's and sad it's sad that people get that miserable that goes against everything I believe in like I obviously I mean this us being here right now is a testament to never ever giving up and uh, yeah anybody that's gonna try and you know take away from that like I just it was good to see her on the other side and to be honest there's no animus like it's just I feel bad for those people you know they choose to live that way and we're gonna live very differently we are living very differently and it starts today and it starts here and this is us living healthy both you know physically mentally
being around the right people, making sure we have the right influences, and doing things the right way. I mean, that's what got us here. The guy told me this morning when they were dragging their feet and they did not want to let me out. He said, man, don't worry about it. He said, good things happen to good people. That's why all this is happening to you now. He goes, man, you got a ton of saved up good karma. And this too is all going to work out. And it has like this. I had shed a tear all day. That's making me cry. This is it. I mean, this is what we've waited years for. And there's no place I would rather be and no one I want to be with at this moment and to share all of this with than you. This is it. I would have never done this for anybody else. I'll <laughs> tell you that. Uh, are we the cheesy people on YouTube? <laughs> we are the cheesy people on YouTube. I'll take it. And yeah, we'll keep you posted. You're the celebrity here, by the way. Oh, please. <laughs> You built the following. All right, should we stop being cheesy people on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. I'm looking right directly at it. And it okay, looks like then you're fine. It. And not me. Look. Why does it look like that? I don't know. Okay. There you go. go. Now you're looking. Because I'm looking <laughs> there. I'm looking at that <laughs> hole. I'm not looking at the middle of the camera. Okay. Well. Okay. Now that we got a good picture. <laughs> I just want to comment on you showing me the clips of you getting ready leading up to, you know, in the days before me getting out. Uh, God, that was tough to watch. It's hard. What you went through Friday, and I knew what you went through, but it still, I mean, it bothered me. It still bothers me right now. Um, but more than anything, it gives me a greater appreciation you know, for everything that you've invested in this relationship, for how you believed in me, how you believed in us, and how fortunate I feel to be right here with you right now and to let you know that there is no one that I want to be with, not just today, but ever. You're making me cry. Oh. So... Since we haven't done this officially, you know, I figured we might as well save it right here. So if I ask you officially, since everyone already assumes that we are, and since we are not legally married, will you legally marry me and be my wife? Of course. Forever and ever. Of course. Yeah. Love you too. So we can make this official. Um, just to add to this, because I wanted to get this on video, I'm gonna try and do this with one hand. Mm-hmm. You're holding the wrong hand. Oh my god. Yeah, it's gonna be official. I mean, you gotta have a ring, right? Oh my god. All right. As we were just telling the people at the store, when we stopped to pick up the ring, they didn't believe that I had spent the last 20 years in prison. Mm -hmm. And they were in complete awe of the fact that anyone <laughs> would stay with someone through that experience. And uh, they were eager to help us make this happen. So, This makes it official. Are you sure? This is what you want. <laughs> no, I don't think so. After all this time. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I love you. I love you too. Then let me put this on your finger. Okay. This is really hard. You know we love you guys. <laughs> mm. Mm, a little bit big. But we can get that fitted later. Yeah? Think that'll work for now? Of course. All right. So the next part is figuring out when we're going to do this. Are we going to videotape it? Are we going to invite everybody to uh, join in? Of course. All right. Well, 
Because we're so private. <laughs> <laughs> They've been here this far. So I'm glad that we got to save that for us. And, uh, you know, it's part of our story. Mm -hmm. yeah, good enough. All right. We'll get back to you.